For this slideshow, I'm going to talk about light as a narrative subject, or rather light as a main element within a group of images, where the artist is either making photographs that talk about light in some way, or using light as a very strong element to illustrate an idea. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and talk about a few different artists and look at bodies of work that they're doing that, that do this in some way, that consider light or use light in a very strong fashion, aesthetically and conceptually. So I want to reiterate this, that at this point I want you guys to be thinking about photographs from a very specific aesthetic point of view, thinking about how the images look, how you want them to look. But also, at this point, I want you guys to start thinking about how your images convey information, conceptually what they're about, what they say, if they're conveying beauty, nature, um, some kind of human feeling, something more abstract, and also how they work together as a group of images. So keep that in mind as you go through this module and as we go through this lecture. So we're going to talk about light as a narrative subject. In this photograph by Dwayne Michaels, we have a man in a subway being illuminated by this light. And this is very uh, sort of on par with the kind of images that Dwayne Michaels makes, in which he uh, sort of explores kind of more inner psychological and spiritual sim symbolisms in his photographs. And light plays a very strong component in that. Here, uh, in a sequence titled The Human Condition, and Dwayne Michaels works in sequence very often, he really thinks a lot about how a group of images can convey meaning over the course of a sequence. We have a man again standing in a subway, and slowly he's being exposed with light brighter and brighter, translating into this macroscopic view of the stars and of a galaxy. And sort of thinking about what that title means, the human condition, we can sort of piece together this idea that Dwayne Michaels is thinking about the light within a human and how that, you know, is a very cosmic and large-scale, um, meaningful idea. And of course, this is sort of artistic and poetic and not telling you any one thing in particular, but in other words, sort of thinking about these grandiose ideas of the human condition, about sort of being one with the universe in a way, and these are things that he returns to again and again. But regardless, oftentimes he's using beautiful um, transfers of light and shadow to really illustrate those ideas like he is here. An artist that was local for a very long time here in New Mexico, Patrick Nagatani, uh, made a very, very wonderful series of color photographs called Chroma Therapy. And in this series of work, he made a, a bunch of vignettes, sort of like little staged scenes in which light is being used as some kind of medicine or scientific tool. And it was sort of a fictional story that he threaded together in which we see colored light being used again and again as this sort of pseudo-scientific um, sort of almost mythological subject in his images. So not only was he using light as a tool in his photographs, in this case dyeing light different colors to illustrate things, but light was the actual subject, right? Colored light and the idea that colored light could be used in different ways in science, in medicine, um, in lifestyle. These kinds of like fun little ideas that he threaded together using different kinds of light, that's the subject here. So. He's using light in multiple ways, right? Obviously using fun light to uh, illustrate the idea of chromotherapy, which is actually a pseudoscientific study um, that was explored for a long period of time. 
And all these images are, of course, staged. And he wants you to be thinking about the different ways in which colored light was being used in strange applications. James Hinkle is an artist that is really obsessed with uh, the sort of everyday mystery and how, uh, you know, these little moments of light and dark and symbolism can really add up to magical moments. He often plays with uh, cutouts and projections and lots of um, flashlights and and things like that to really illustrate these beautiful ideas that he has. Here you can see a projection of um, a vision test in someone's hand. And when you look at them, you know, they're kind of mysterious and kind of in the same way that Dwayne Michaels is kind of meditating on the human condition and the mystery of the human condition. And it comes out in different ways in Dwayne's work and it comes out different ways in, um, in James Hinkle's work here. In this case, using a, a laser light to uh, draw an image into someone's hand. And if you look at James Hinkle's work, he makes work about lots of different things, and he has lots of different photo series that um, are focused on different ideas. But regardless, he has a strong use of shadow and highlight and projected light to really play up these kind of almost like childhood mysteries. And they're sort of magical in a way. And here you can see he's projecting light through shapes to create these really interesting uh, light and shadow plays here on a child's sketchbook. Even the great Pablo Picasso was interested in how uh, light could be used throughout the course of time in uh, photography. Pablo, being very committed to his practice of drawing, uh, found it very entertaining to be able to draw something that he couldn't see until after the photo was made. Pablo Picasso was, um, of course, uh, you know, celebrated for his quick sketches and expressive drawings. And you could see a drawing happen immediately on paper, but here, drawing with uh, an electric flashlight, he had to wait until the long exposure was done before he could see the image rendered. And now, after many seconds, you can see his drawings rendered in light. And we refer to this today as light painting or light drawing. Here you can see him attempting his very famous uh, sketch of a bull, which he did over and over again in his career. Here behind him, you can see it drawn on the easel. And this image is interesting because while we have this very long exposure, drawn over the course of probably a few seconds. That would, that would assume that everything would be blurry, but in fact, he and the whole room are still and sharp. So what happened is, is he set his camera to make a really long exposure, many seconds, in order for him to do this drawing. And then at the very end of the exposure, before the shutter closes, a flash goes off in the room. And that flash at the very end of the exposure illuminates everything for a split second capturing all the detail. And you can do this too with your own camera if you set your flashes to what's called rear sync flash um, or to flash the end of an exposure or at the beginning of an exposure. Uh, if you set your exposure to be a long time, whatever is moving in that time blurs like this and then whatever is um, captured by the flash at the beginning or the end of the exposure is rendered really sharp in the image. The artist Julie Blackman uh, didn't start out really as an artist per se. Uh, she was actually um, a stay-at-home mom when she started exploring the childhood and the sort of the sort of big mysterious world through uh, the lens of her children, uh, literally with her camera through the lens of her camera. So she imagined the lives and the learning processes and the wonder that children feel when they're growing up and how big the world is. And so she began to capture that with her camera. And while her work has transformed a lot in, in the many years that she's been making photographs, and she's very well known now for it, her first series is um, this stark, graphic, black and white um, imagery that really just um, 
has so much in common, I think, with the psychology of children and the psychology of growing up and learning and the things that we go through as children and maybe the things that we go through as parents, too. And of course, remember, looking at these images, right, that idea is being supported by the aesthetic choices and the elements and principles that she's using in her photographs. Here we have this beautiful use of line, right? This white chalk on this black asphalt leading us back to this child. And this composition's wonderful, right? We start down here in the bottom left and it zigzags us through the image to the top right, right? Using kind of our rule of thirds. And then it's balancing the image out with this light on the top left, dark on the bottom right, we're cutting it in half diagonally, and then our ultimate subject we're led to, this little girl kneeling in front of her chalk. It's a wonderful picture. But it's a picture that contains such great use of light and shadow and contrast, but, but also that use of those elements supports this idea of childhood and expression and drawing on the ground with chalk. So remember that using those graphic elements of light and the principles of design in order to support your conceptual idea, which in her case is exploring childhood. This is one of my favorite images of hers, where she uses a very a really high vantage point, right? We talked about vantage point in our last module, and here we have this almost above vantage point, right? Looking straight down into an inflatable kiddie pool where two kids are swimming around in a circle with a little floaty in the middle. And all these circles reiterated, right? And the contrast, the dark rubber, the dark ground, and then the bright illuminated water with sunlight and these two children swimming around. It's a really fun image. Again, elements and principles beautifully uh, illustrating a good conceptual idea, but also very simple. Uh, someone who I think uh, a lot of you might be able to relate to is Todd Haido. And uh, I like, like to start by talking about Todd Haido with the fact that I don't necessarily agree with everything that Todd Haido does, um, all the photographs he's ever made. Uh, he's got some controversial images uh, that I'm not too fond of, some portraits. And he's just kind of a creepy person sometimes. But his photographs of uh, um, windows and light illuminating devices at night are just really spectacular and they resonate with this really kind of um, sort of Steven Spielberg feel. Um, there's a series that Todd was really well known for where he drove around with his camera at night photographing houses with lights on or lights on at night. And they just have this sort of bizarre, surreal quality of, you know, rural Americana. There's kind of an anxiety and tension to them. And I think part of that is imbued with the fact that, uh, from the fact that there are all of these landscapes illuminated by human lights, but there's nobody around, right? We're left to wonder what's going on inside the house or where everybody went. We're out here as viewers and we know that there's something or someone in there, but we don't know what it is because we, just like Todd Heido, are on the outside um, only um, really sort of seeing and visualizing the evidence of human life from these lit spaces that are pouring light out into the twilight. And so they're very cinematic, they're very moody, uh, again, an anxiety and tension to them. And again, a simple idea, right? Todd just takes his camera around at night and photographs the lights that are left on by, you know, human life. Of course, paying, paying special attention to frame images nicely and think about color. One of my favorite photographers that thinks about light in a really profound way is Hiroshi Sugimoto. And later on in the module, I have a video in the artist spotlight where Hiroshi talks about his work. And he talks in detail about how he thinks about light and time and how those two subjects are intertwined. Here, one of his famous photographs from a series of movie theater drive-ins. Uh, Hiroshi was really famous for a series of drive-ins and of movie theaters where he made extremely long exposures. 
he opened up his camera shutter for an hour or two hours at a time, allowing the light of an entire movie to play and pour into his camera. Now this took a little bit of practice and trial and error, getting the exposure right and making your apertures really, really small because of course an hour is a lot of light when it comes to shutter speed time. But the result is so surreal. And if you think about it, in this case, the light is directly uh, related to time here because what we're looking at is a white screen where a movie is being projected using lights, right? A big movie projector. And if we were to take a really fast exposure, we would see the image. But what he's effectively done is he's erased any visual representation of the movie because he's allowed the lights of the entire film to project in the course of one exposure. And in so doing, blows out the screen to a white light. And he talks about this in the video, so pay attention to that, because it's kind of philosophical. But it's really kind of interesting, too, because what we see from exposing an entire film is a lack of detail, is a lack of information. By allowing all of the information of that light from the movie to come into our camera, we effectively erase, erase it. It gets lost in the information. It's kind of an interesting kind of duality of light and time. And this is one of my favorite images of that series because it's outside and the screen lights up this really weird kind of desert scene. And also up in the sky, you have all of the airplanes and the satellites flying by and hovering by because of course the exposure took an hour and a half, two hours. And so you can see all the stuff in the sky passing by over the course of the exposure. No Photoshop, this is a film photograph. All one image. And in all of Hiroshi Sugimoto's series, he's always thinking about light or in time and how those two things interact. And if you look at his other work and read his art statements, you will see that he's thinking about that kind of relationship in each. And these are more from his movie theater series where he's exposing an entire film. So going forward, we're going to end it right here. There's so many artists that we can look at. But I just want you to think about the different ways in which you could use light as a subject or use light to truly reveal a subject in a special way. You don't have to overthink this. People like Todd Haido just simply photograph light at night. And Hiroshi Sugimoto simply lets an entire movie play into his camera into one exposure. Um, you could think about using lights on moving objects or using light writing or um, things like that. So just come up with a, you know, a couple of different ways that you want to explore light as a subject for this long-term assignment. And start photographing. And for your first part of your artist, uh, or your long-term assignment, you're going to just experiment with some different ways that you could use light as a subject. And then you're going to pick one. And we're going to expand on that in part two to make five to seven final images for some kind of concept where light is the subject. Okay, I hope this makes sense and I hope that these artists reveal some fun, different, interesting ways of thinking about light as a subject or uh, as an element in photography. And uh, please do your own research and um, share it on the MeWe and feel free to ask me any questions or chat with me about your ideas. I'd like to hear from you guys about your, uh, your direction. Okay, talk to y'all later.